Welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada, the host city of NAB 2014. We're here on the 45th floor of the Trump International Hotel. This is Cinema 5D on the couch. Presented by b and the professional's source. Vitech Videocom, Tools on Air, and Zeiss. Welcome to the fourth episode of Cinema 5D on the couch. Today we have a session with a few camera manufacturers and talk about new cameras introduced at NAB. Um, we'll start out with the newer kids on the block. So this is JH from Kinefinity, Kineraw, and yeah. uh, this is Stuart Ashton from Blackmagic Design. Hi. Um, after that we will do, uh, we'll have two representatives uh, from Canon and Sony, uh, but we'll start out with these two. So. Um, Kineraw, you, you've, your first camera is now almost two years old and you've yes. kept innovating, you've brought out new cameras as well. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us something about your new products? Uh, yeah, and uh, this year, at the beginning of this year, we launched uh, and announced two new cameras, uh, the Kine Mini 4K and the uh, Kine Max 6K. And the Kine Mini 4K is a, a new camera that uh, uses the 4K platform and upgraded from our Kine Raw Mini before and the Johnny and Tesla cameras and uh, last year. And so because you know that the 4K production and 4K delivery is trained and is reality. So we upgrade our cameras into 4K platform. So Kine Mini, is, Kine Mini 4K is uh, first uh, Kine Raw cameras features 4K. And uh, in the IB we show that they're working nearly very close to production. Okay. Yes, and it will be launched uh, in <coughs> It be shipped uh, at the end of this month to Chinese customers, and uh, and uh, it's uh, and the Kine Max 6K. Uh, we did not bring the uh, sample cameras, and uh, uh, well, it it will be shipped uh, after two months, I think. Yeah, and uh, everything goes well. So you upgraded the existing cameras to with a 4K sensor. Basically. 4K sensor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. The Kine Mini 4K uh, same sensor with the previous models. And the 6K new employs a new, whole new, <coughs> whole new sensors. So you can record ProRes now. You're not forced to shoot. Uh, uh, no, anymore? no. In camera, in camera, you cannot record ProRes, mm -hmm. uh, but they can. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very similar can, to Blackmagic. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we are at the same time, Kine Mini and the Kine Max, they can record Cinema DNG and uh, uh, Cineform RAW MOV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can record Cinema DNG now. <laughs> and at the same time, um, we, you can use our offline software, KineStation, to transcode the Cinema DNG into Cineform or into ProRes. Okay. Yes. So we provide a, a different uh, codec, codec uh, for the post workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Blackmagic Design also surprised us again with even two new cameras this year. Uh, we really were, nobody was expecting that to have... <laughs> you, you honestly were surprised? Well, I mean, there were, people were joking the day before the show that there will be new Blackmagic cameras, but nobody believed it because we already thought, well, there's a 4K, no, what's, what's next? So, so what can you tell us about the new product? Yeah, I, th I think that you're right, there was, there was somewhat of a surprise with what we announced. Uh, I guess that for us, we've, we've been in the camera market now for two years and we're starting to really build a portfolio of cameras that covers everything from the pocket cinema camera up through the 2.5K model and then the 4K model. Um, what we started to find with those cameras was they were starting to evolve in terms of third-party um, third gear being put onto those cameras. And what we always envisaged as a small, as a small handheld camera started to become a lot larger in size. So for this show, what we did is we started to look at two distinct areas of the, of the market, one being studio cameras and live production. And then the second camera we looked at was trying to take that camera with all those accessories and start to build it into a full-size body of our own. So we've got two different cameras that um, you know, we, uh, we're really talking about. First one being the Ursa. Um, this, is, um, this is the full body camera, which has uh, got a 4K sensor in, uh, sorry, is Ultra HD, but with a 35 uh, mil um, global shutter in there. Um, that's the one that um, you know, a lot of interest has come about just purely because of the versatility of it and the fact that the camera somewhat looks at um, these full frame camera, these, these full size cameras in a slightly different light in terms of we've, we've, we work around zones. So, you know, we've got an audio monitoring station and we've got like an assist station and we've got this fold out 10 inch 
10 inch monitor as well um, with a removable turret so that you can upgrade um, obviously things like the lens mount and further down the line we can change sensors in the camera too. And then we've got the studio cameras which are the live cameras. Um, these again have a 10 inch screen, we've got a HD and an ultra HD version, um, both of which with micro four thirds mounts. Um, but the great thing about those is they integrate perfectly with RA10 production switches, um, which means that they also receive talkback and tally, and um, you can actually control the CCD of those cameras directly from an ATEM2. So those are kind of the two two cameras that you know we've really pushed hard this show, and um, you know hopefully uh, hopefully they'll uh, they'll live up to the expectations. Mm. So the Ursa has the same sensor as the 4K Blackmagic 4K. That's correct. Yeah, I mean obviously that we we've been working hard to um, to look at the ergonomics and also look at the sensor, but also look at flexibility as I say further down the line. So um, at the moment the sensor that we that we're running and um, you know we're very happy with is the 4K sensor, um, um, but further down the line we could potentially change that out and, and put a higher um, a, a sensor in there with maybe wider dynamic range or even um, faster frame rates. Currently the actual 4K sensor does about 60 frames per second, but the body's capable of doing 120. In 4K. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what is it recording on? So, so it actually records on um, on CFast 2 cards, um, which has been optimized for video. Um, these are something that have started to really kind of um, sort of come into fruition really this last this kind of last few months. Um, what we're starting to see is that the interest around that as a medium is quite good for us because one of the things that we've never really done as a business is start to build things like our own proprietary um, recording um, recording hardware. So we want to take something that's available to everybody and those can be picked up pretty much from anywhere. Mm -hmm. So this 10 inch screen is something we haven't seen in any camera so far. It's like it's, it's as big as the iPad that's I, right. I think. Um, the first question that came to mind when I saw it is like is it the iPad screen because it looks very much like it. It looks very similar, but it's not. No, it's um, sourced elsewhere. Yeah. It is, yeah. It isn't a touch screen. So it's the we've got three monitors on the camera, and this one isn't touch screen. Um, it's um, the resolution of it's 19, 20, 10, 80, um, but the color the color in it's fantastic, and the viewing angle is great. Um, you do have an option as well. There is a HD SDI output on the top of the camera, which gives you the ability to cap, uh, to actually integrate an EVF if you want to. Mm. Um, well, I, I think you need to if you try to operate it on the shoulder. Otherwise, that's right. you have this in front of your head. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah, we can cut two holes in it so you can see right through <laughs> it. Um, but um, but yeah, I guess that you know the way we're working with this camera is is, is really to develop a a collaborative workflow with other people around the camera, and that 10-inch monitor means that it. It means that you don't have to now go out and buy an additional monitor now to now plug into the camera. And the studio camera is basically um, looks like an iPad with a lens attached, mm. uh, and is, it doesn't have an internal recorder, right? So it's uh, it's only SDI out. Yeah. So it's uh, so again, it's in terms of live production. We, we see this as a multi-cam setup, really, where you may be working with two or three cameras. In it that would be room. perfect for our show here. Absolutely. You yeah. use a lot of like magic design equipment, so <laughs> <laughs> it's only the cameras. Yeah. I mean, I mean, again, the the fact that this camera is very different than what you usually usually see. Um, when we design and we develop products, what we try to do is is really think about the ergonomics. Um, it's not just about creating something that essentially is the same as everything else. The aim is to try and think about the way in which people work and what people are looking for. And what feedback we got around studio work was that people wanted a large screen because they wanted to feel part of what it was that they were filming. Um, so it's kind of like the world's smallest studio camera but with the largest viewfinder in the world so um, the, the the kind of the match goes quite well. It's good that you mentioned feedback. We got a lot of questions from people regarding like magic cameras and most people just want to know uh, you know because Owners of current or of existing Blackmagic cameras want to know when do they finally get the firmware upgrade so they are actually able to delete clips or format their card in camera. Sure. Uh, people have been waiting for this for quite a while and I think it's pretty essential. Is this on the horizon? or? So, so we are actually going to have a firmware released after the show at some point near after. Um, that's going to incorporate things like the Cinema DNG um, 4K for, for the, uh, the 4K production camera. Um, there's a few other bugs that we're, we know we're going to fix as well and a few additional features that you'll see and be announced shortly after. Um, in terms of formatting, formatting the cards, I mean we obviously listen to all the feedback that we get and we look into those things but for that at the moment we can't guarantee an answer or, or you know a resolution immediately but all the feedback that we get you know we obviously look over and we and we try and do what we can because the problem is you kind of if you're out in the field shooting with a camera y if you don't lug your computer around all the time you, you can't just you know get the stuff off i mean you you could you, 
sometimes there's just a shot that isn't, wasn't right and you want to delete it in camera. You don't want to be waiting until you get to a computer. So I think, I think this is something that people really need to have in, in production. So. Yeah, I think, I think with the Ursa camera, the new one that we've, we've developed, I think what's interesting is that, with that is some of the feedback, again, that we've picked up over the course of the last two years. I think that when you, um, you know, when you start to design something new, and um, you know, all of us will know with, with developing cameras that you, you're never going to produce something that's absolutely perfect for everybody. Um, and what we uh, what we do is we listen to that feedback and we try and do our best to put that into a, maybe an existing model. Or if we can't do it within an existing model, then what we'll do is we'll consider that for a future model. Yeah. Um, but you know, all the feedback that we get, you know, and we get plenty of it. Um, we, uh, we we make sure that we listen to. We tested the Blackmagic 4K, and um, I think we had some issues with it because we had like a, a few dead pixels, and also on the second unit we received, uh, we heard from some other people who had the same problems. How did you react to that? Uh, is the are there problems in the production process, or have we resolved them? Well, in terms of in terms of the cameras that we've got out into the marketplace, you know, we've we've shipped a lot of cameras, um, and I think that when you're talking about the volume of cameras that we ship, there are always going to be in the early stages some things that they may come to light with a handful. Um, one of the very early. Yeah. yeah, one of one of the one of the things that we're starting to see now is that the the 4K camera, especially the footage that's going online and the work that people are doing with it, is is really creating a buzz. You know, I think that. We're actually happier with it now it's in the market than maybe we were before we released it because we felt that um, you know the camera you know would only appeal to a certain part of the market. But what we've started to find is that people have really embraced it and, and embraced the technology and um, the images that people are pulling off. And certainly when you're working, um, you know, when you're working with such a high resolution, when you take that into a color correction environment, you're you're able to really punch them images. Um, you know, and it's a, it's a camera that you know for three thousand dollars is um, you know is really uh, it was really kind of um, grasping people's imagination. It is. Um, but how do you react to people who complain about the light sensitivity of the camera? Well, the camera was never meant to be a low light camera. I mean, that was that's supposed the first okay. thing. You know, we the camera is is, is native 400, 400 ASA with a maximum of eight hundred ASA, and um, you know we. We, we feel that it performs it performs well in low light um, for the type of camera that it is. Um, you know, I think that when we announced the two and a half K camera the year before, and we talked about thirteen stops of dynamic range with a you know sort of a you know wider ASA, um, people were expecting it to perform very similarly. But we were very honest from the outset in terms of in terms of, of how that camera will function, um, and certainly when we're looking at the stuff that's being shot. Um, the stuff that's been shot in low light is actually very good in, from, from our point of view. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the pattern issue that we had in the low lights is resolved? Like uh, we, we had an issue with, uh, I think it was ISO 800. Sure. We could see the pattern of the sensor actually. Yeah, um, if, you, if, you drive, if you drive the camera you know, in low light you know, quite hard, then, you know, then potentially you, you know, you're going to reach the limits. But I think that in terms of you know, certain issues that you mentioned before in terms of firmware fixable things, you know, we, can, we can rectify. But you know, you've, got to, you've got to appreciate as well that you know, when you put a, a sensor in a camera, there is only so much that there's only so much that that sensor can do, yeah. um, and um, you know from our point of view, we're, we're happy with those. You know, we're happy with what we're seeing, and um, you know certainly from the numbers of what we've sold, um, you know we're getting uh, you know we're getting a lot of good feedback. Mm. So with a Kineroy, obviously a much much smaller uh, market, I think, or, or at least uh, you're a smaller company, so you, you cater to a smaller market, but it's probably more specialized. What kind of people are interested in, in, in the Kinero? You know, who are the people who buy your camera? Actually, and uh, the, maybe uh, like the BMD, BMDCC and BPC and uh, more uh, production company, especially small production companies, they want, they, maybe they're tired of the RSR's cameras and uh, they want to try the real cinema cameras and uh, so they choose our cameras because our cameras is designed for the cinema functions such as uh, over crank, under crank scenes and also uh, nearly no, no FPN mm. <laughs> nearly no FPN and uh, so for the highlights and the low shadow you cannot find hard uh, even the, the, the image is very I think it's perfect yeah especially the 4K uh, 4K camera came mini, and um, last Sunday we we took the camera, took the sample cameras uh, in the Las Vegas, and took and uh, we captured at um, 
daylight day and the light and night and uh, make a small, uh, sh small uh, short video and I think the, uh, the color and we improve the color and also uh, it will show it's more sharper than before mm -hmm. so we will, we will upload it to the website uh, our website and also the Vimeo and you will see it yeah and uh, so it's mostly people in cinematography it's not broadcast obviously it's mm -hmm. more people yeah. who have the time and can put effort into post production yes and um, and uh, for the users and for also for the partition users they are, maybe they, they will not uh, use uh, our cameras for the as a production or i mean the tv like the uh, BM, BMD's uh, production camera usage mm -hmm. to use directed to the TV production. They use our cameras, maybe you, you, you use uh, for the MV, um, um, for making MV and uh, short film or feature film, something like that. It's uh, not like the <coughs> uh, 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 that, that things. So I think um, uh, our cameras, uh, Kenny Mini or Kenny, Kenny Max, uh, or even the previous models, that more uh, uh, serious does it in my uh, cameras. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the market is really clearly moving into 4K, yeah. uh, especially from the camera side. I mean, like Magic as a company who is heavily in post-production, uh, how can you see, because the post-production world hasn't caught on yet. I mean, there's a lot of post-production houses where you go with your 4K image from whatever camera and they will just have to you know shrink it down to 2k in order to be able to uh, actually do proper post-production on it they just don't not have the capabilities yet and uh, it's slowly catching on but where do you see do you see 4k um, in finishing in the in in the near future or is it more like 4k for hd or 2k delivery I think, I think from my point of view, we're seeing, we're seeing Ultra HD across you know, a much wider range you know, than maybe we saw 12 months ago. I think in terms of catching up, you're absolutely right. I, I think that things are picking up pace um, in terms of um, people wanting to access Ultra HD equipment and work in an Ultra HD environment. Um, I think that they're obviously, in terms of things like storage capabilities and um, the physicality of moving media around, still hinders or still, still um, you know, worries a few people. But those are being rectified very, very quickly. There's conversation obviously out there in terms of you know, delivery over things like 6 gig SDI and um, you know, we talk on our booth about 12 gig SDI as well. Um, but you know, when you move into various different spaces, things even like um, live event and um, you know, the AV spaces, 4K is, is, is already there. Um, I think that um, you know, for us, we, we see that the future of it is very bright and um, you know, we've, uh, we've certainly committed ourselves to it as a company. You know, all of our products now have 6 gig SDI on. All the new products that we're showing at, um, at the show are, um, are all Ultra HD um, and that pretty much completes our entire lineup now for Ultra HD. But I think that I guess what, what frightens a few people is that it's just that kind of leap a little bit to something new. Um, and you've always got to be very careful when you, when you move in that direction that you don't take your eye off the people who are not ready yet. Um, and that's why we've always tried to consider that in every technology that we create or every technology that we work towards, um, we always ensure that, for instance, we're not forgetting the HD crowd, we're not forgetting the SD crowd, because wherever you move in the globe, there's always somebody who's working on something that you know, maybe people thought phased out five years ago. So can you actually, I don't even know, can you switch the ca your camera or your camera, can you switch them to HD? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they, it's without the crop mode? or Yeah, so, so, we, so in, the, in the URSA there's the ability to record in HD. Mm -hmm. um, without the crop? Uh, that's right, I believe it's a direct, it's a direct reduction, you know, sort of full time re reduction. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the studio camera, you actually have an option when you buy whether you want a HD or an Ultra HD one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Kenny Mini or Kenny Max also. So has actually is a little bit from, um, different from the other ca other cameras. It features uh, for even the 4K sensors, 4K recording, and uh, they have 2K or 4 HD mode. And uh, we have two working mode as uh, four sensors or crop mode, record 2K. Mm -hmm. The the uh, the first one is uh, we we use our internal binning. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, to process, use the every pixel sound sensor into 2K, and the second one as a crop mode. So, uh, so it's the sensor. It's just uh, employs the center of the sensor, and uh, it's still 2K because you use the 4K, mm -hmm. 4K sensor. So it turns into a super 16 millimeters 
cameras, <laughs> so that you can use some um, other lenses, su mm -hmm. such like the uh, Super 16 lens or B4 lens. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that, is that feature available on the Black Magic cameras? <sighs> I'm not sure. You, the way you were talking, then I was, I was like I was watching the numbers okay. in the matrix. Um, I, I'm not sure in all that. Crop mode. Uh, like yeah. I mean, uh, my my understanding is that the two modes in which you shoot within the ursa are effectively, you know, a HD and an ultra HD mode. I'm not sure how the interpolation of that happens within the camera. Yeah. Um, that's there's much more smart guys in Black Magic who can deal with those sorts of questions. Okay, gentlemen, we'll have to wrap it up here because we have Canon and yeah. Sony waiting <laughs> behind the scenes as well. Thank you, and yeah, see you at the show. Thanks okay, very thank much. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Yeah, okay.